Now look, I'm sorry to mess up your schedule. We usually do the post game thoughts videos on Mondays. We drop them on Monday mornings. But after that game, y'all thought I was gonna wait till Monday morning to drop? No, team, keep it clean. I am your host, Engraven Viz, and I'm here to share my post game thoughts from that crazy, insane, wild, electric. I don't even know what else to call it. That game that we just witnessed from the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. The game was amazing. The game was crazy. I can't say it was crazy from start to finish because it started off, yeah, then it started and then it went a little, uh, but then in that third, fourth quarter, it went wild. But shout out to the Baltimore Ravens for closing it, for finishing. Even there were a lot of times with the Baltimore Ravens, they tried to say, Bengals, take it. We don't want it. We don't want it. It's all yours. But they closed it out. Let's start with Lamar Jackson. This game, let's start Baltimore Ravens offense. In this game, the Baltimore Ravens offense, they started off the game hot. They made it look easy. They drove right down the field and got a touchdown. It was looking like, oh, okay, could this be one of them games? Then they took a little bit off, but then they end up getting back into the end zone again. So the offense was moving the ball. They were scoring points, but then it got to the point where they just they came to a screeching halt. And we were thinking, oh, no, here we go. Bengals, they started come, not only coming back, but – they took the lead. Then they took a bigger lead. Then it became a 10-point game. So we were like, mm, okay, I, all right, what's this offense going to do? Offense was like, look, let's wake up. We got this. We know that we can move the ball on these guys. We, we, we got this. Let's do it. So what did they do? They, they woke up, and they, they never went back. Well, they went back to sleep. They took a little quick nap toward the end of the game. Well, Lamar did, but they started scoring and scoring and scoring and so they, they just kept it going so many times with the Baltimore Ravens we've seen where the offense the offense they'll wake up for a little bit but then they'll go to sleep for the majority of the game but the defense the defense will be locking stuff down the defense will be making stops the defense will be forcing whether it be turnovers forcing punts they will be stopping the opposing team's offenses and the, the Baltimore Ravens offense they, they will be lifeless we've seen that so many times but the offense said today, no, 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 no. We got y'all. We're going to come through this game. We're going to flip the switch, and we're going to reverse roles for this game. It's going to be the Ravens defense that's lifeless. <laughs> we're going to talk about them in a little bit, though. But Baltimore Ravens offense in this game, straight, just amazing. And, and when you think about it, the capabilities of this, and I know Bengals defense is definitely not the best in the world. Probably one of the worst. But when you see Baltimore Ravens offense do it like that, you think about the possibilities. You think about the capabilities of this offense. Think about this. Something to think about. The entire Baltimore Ravens offense contributed. What do I mean when I say that? Obviously, Lamar Jackson is going to contribute every game because he touches the ball every single game. But Lamar Jackson, as the quarterback, obviously he's going to contribute. But Derrick Henry... He contributed. But the, the, the Bengals were like, look, Derrick Henry, we've seen what you did to these teams the past couple of weeks. Really, these first four games. We've seen how you've been running. You think you're about to run for four quarters on us like that? Nope. But Derrick Henry said, oh, that's cool. I'll do it in five. Derrick Henry closed it out. That was such a beautiful thing. Because Derrick Henry, before that long 51-yard run, Derrick Henry had 14 carries for 41 yards. So the Bengals, even though he got that touchdown, it was like a one-yard touchdown, the Bengals were holding Derrick Henry down. But guess what the Baltimore, guess what Lamar Jackson did too? In the fourth quarter, we saw Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and, and respect to Joe Burrow, much respect to Joe Burrow, because we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, we saw Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, scoring touchdowns. But then um, when with Lamar Jackson, it came to that point where, hey, Ravens stopped the Bengals. The game is in Lamar Jackson's hand. Hey, go win it, man. You've been out there killing it. And, and so many people, I remember people in the, in the live stream chat, they were like, all right, Lamar, put on a Superman cape. We need you to save us. Because he had been doing that. 
He had been doing that because the defense, they certainly weren't doing it. But Lamar had been scoring back-to-back -back with Joe Burrow. But then when Lamar snapped that ball, and I don't know if he, he looked away for a split second, I don't know what it was. But I was thinking live, I was hoping that, all right, maybe, hopefully we called a timeout. Oh, maybe it was a bad snap, but it was all on Lamar, that fumble, where he fumbled the snap. It was completely on Lamar. Right then and there, I said, oh, man, oh, this is tough. But we did say it's not over. It's not over. Like Baltimore Ravens defense literally couldn't give them anything, couldn't give them any yards. And they only gave them like three yards after that. And then we know what happened. We're going to talk about that shortly. But I was like, oh, that's tough. Lamar, he, mm, he failed in the biggest moment of the game. And, and, and it would have been so tough because Lamar overall, he played such a great game. We know early on he had some misses. He had some missed throws, had some overthrows here and there. But overall, even with those, he played a great game. A great game. Wasn't turning the ball over, did his thing. But then in that moment, he came up short, fumbled the ball. Didn't even, like he didn't throw an incompletion. He didn't throw an interception. Didn't take a set. He fumbled the ball, gave it to the Bengals. So he didn't even get a chance to see what would have happened with that play. That was one of the worst parts about it. But guess what? Ravens defense, they made the stop. Well, the special teams too. But then on the very next drive, Lamar Jackson and Todd Munkin, they said, hey, Lamar, you've had your cape on all game. You've had your cape on all game, especially the second half, especially late in the second half. You've been saving this team. Let's give that cape to somebody else. So in overtime, Lamar, first and 10, they hand it off to Derrick Henry. What do the Bengals do? Stop him. Nothing. It's second and 10. This is where it was the craziest 10 yards for me that we've seen in a long time from the Ravens. It's second and 10. It's overtime. You trying to get a touchdown, man. You trying to get a touchdown. What did the Baltimore Ravens do? They did a toss play. They pitched the ball to Derrick Henry. Pitched the ball to him. And then he ended up, uh, oh, and, and actually, I, I think I, missed, I mistimed everything because the, the, that, that fumble snap, that actually came in overtime, I believe. Um, but anyway, with Lamar Jackson, after that fumble, they, they, they pitched it to Derrick Henry, and Derrick Henry got eight yards. And when they did that pitch play, I was like, what, they really doing this right now? In overtime, they trying – but Derrick Henry got eight yards. Then on the next play, third and two, they gave it to Derrick Henry again. But in the closing moments, man, they let Derrick Henry be the Superman. They let Derrick Henry save the Baltimore Ravens. This is what you brought him in for. To be able to give Lamar Jackson some significant help, especially on the ground, but somebody that can help you – close out games one way or another. Usually when we think about Derrick Henry closing out games, we think about, all right, Baltimore Ravens, they build up a lead, and then they just run the ball. Teams get tired of tackling Derrick Henry. They can't stop Derrick Henry. Boom. But we don't think about closing games like that. Where well, they give it to Derrick Henry, and he runs for 51 yards. Almost, if it was 54, then it would have been a touchdown. He tried. But I, I do like how Ravens, because I, I was expecting them, all right, they got that big run. Just give it to Derrick Henry, get in the end zone. But Raven, John Harbaugh said, nope, we ain't playing no games. Field goal unit, let's go win the game. Let's get it over here with. Let's get out of here. I respect it. I respect it. And the offense, they came through for the Baltimore Ravens. But like we were saying earlier, the Baltimore Ravens, they, it was contributions from everybody. Lamar Jackson, we just talked about Derrick Henry. The wide receivers, Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, they both contributed a lot. And let's look at the numbers for both of them. Zay Flowers, seven catches, 111 yards. Zay Flowers did his thing today. But Rashad Bateman, he had four catches, 58 yards, and a touchdown. We were, and he had eight targets. Look at that. With Rashad Bateman, I said that he reminds me of Derrick Henry. And I know when I say that, that sounds insane. That sounds crazy. That sounds wild. How can Rashad Bateman remind us of a future Hall of Famer, somebody that just cra crossed 100 touchdowns in his career somebody that just crossed 10,000 rushing yards in his career one of the best to ever do it at his position how can Rashad Bateman remind us of that well what I mean when I say that Rashad Bateman reminds me of Derrick Henry is because you just got to keep feeding him you got to keep feeding him it, it would him if you want him to do well you want him to have success you got to keep him involved Ravens kept him involved today they kept Rashad Bateman involved today and he delivered
he delivered in a big way. Tylen Wallace, he even had a clutch catch. He actually had two catches, but one of them was super, super clutch. Justice Hill had a catch. Nelson Aguilar had a catch. Derrick Henry even had a catch, but the tight ends in this game, the tight ends in this game, Charlie, Charlie Kohler, Isaiah Likely, and then with Mark Andrews, we were thinking, oh, man, it's getting awkward because Mark Andrews, he nowhere to be found. Where's Mark Andrews? We've seen him blocking here and there, but as far as the receiving game, Mark Andrews been MIA. And we ain't talking about the Dolphins, baby. Mark Andrews said, watch this. Oh, oh, Lamar needs me to come through? Oh, it's clutch time? All right, hey, we done been here before plenty of times. You know you can count on me. I got you. Mark Andrews came through in that fourth quarter, baby. He really came through in that fourth quarter. Uh, Charlie Kohler, three catches for 64 yards, a touchdown. Uh, Mark Andrews, four catches for 55 yards. Isaiah Likely, three catches for 13 yards and two touchdowns. And his second one, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Even his first one. His first one, I was for sure. Like, Ravens have been doing a much better job recently over these past couple of weeks of not being so obvious with this stuff. And what I mean when I say that, on Isaiah Likely's first touchdown, it was, I believe it was first and goal, but I, I was for sure they were going to give it to Derrick Henry just running in. They faked it to Derrick Henry. Isaiah Likely wide open. Lamar floated to him. He caught it. Boom, touchdown. Easy money. But the second touchdown... When I watched that second time, I said, oh, Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in the game. Best quarterback in the game. Better than Patrick Mahomes. Better than Josh Allen. Better than Joe Burrow. Better than whoever else. When he, that, set, that touchdown to Isaiah Likely, where Lamar Jackson got, should have been sacked, not once, but twice, that, like, it was just, that was one of the most beautiful plays that I've ever witnessed in watching football. And I know some people are going to say, oh, you're probably just saying that because the game was all hype and it was excited that Watch that play again and, and tell me how many quarterbacks would have went, went down on that play. How many quarterbacks would have got sacked or just threw it away too. And there would have been nothing wrong with that, but that just shows you how special uh, Lamar Jackson is as the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm glad he's a quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. It's been really great to, to, to watch him this year. Uh, just watch his growth. Just watch how he takes care of the ball because he's been taking care of the ball. It's like with Lamar Jackson, he does have one interception this year, but that one interception, it's not even on him. It's not even his fault. He threw it to Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman just dropped it, and Robert Spillane made a heck of a play. So Lamar Jackson, oh, he's been really taking care of the ball. He does have a couple of fumbles. He got the fumble today. Uh, had the fumble against the Raiders. Uh, had the fumble against the Bills. So he got three fumbles lost. And then, oh, there was another play. Where I think it was Isaiah Likely touchdown. That, b before even the sacks, he fumbled it. He dropped the ball. He fumbled the ball. He had to try to scoop it up. So I guess today, and, and I forgot that it was windy outside, but still, you still, because Joe Burrow ain't fumbled. Lamar Jackson fumbled twice. I forgot about that. But even on that play where he fumbled, he picked it up, avoided them two sacks. Like most players, if there's a fumble on a snap, it's, it's over. It's, it's like it's done you are it's a wrap and because you can't really do nothing because you're so busy trying to protect the ball and recover the ball you ain't trying to make no play so Mar jackson said nope i ain't most players so amazing game from lamar jackson amazing game from the ravens offense <laughs> overall let's talk about special teams because special teams this game i remember um justin tucker when they sent him out for that fourth quarter, what was it, I think a 53-yard field goal, I was nervous because I'm like, man, Justin Tucker, he ain't been it this, this year. From kicks over 50, mm -mm, it's been uh, – then last – or two weeks ago against the Cowboys indoors, 46 yards, he missed it. I'm like, man, what is going on with Justin Tucker? We've had so many conversations, so many questions from Team Keep It Clean. What is happening with Justin Tucker? But I said, like, hey, he ain't going nowhere. He's locked in with the Ravens, and what we got to do is just hope – Hope that things get better. Hope that he turns it around. So that they, they trotted him out there. They said, hey, Justin Tucker, we trust you. We still rocking with you. I mean, they ain't got no choice because he locked in with the contract. But they're like, hey, go do what we know you can do. And he did it. Justin Tucker is back. He's back. He got my trust again. And the reason I say that is because he had not kicked the field goal all week last week. He kicked the point after touchdown, those field goals. But he ain't kicked no three-point field goal all week last week. He just on the sideline. Then he came out. Okay, Ravens scored a touchdown. All right, I'll go kick the point after the touchdown. But for regular field goals, nope, none. And the last three field goals that he kicked, he missed. 
last three regular field goals that he kicked before this he missed. So not only has he missed those field goals from earlier this season, he didn't kick a, a, a field goal all week last week. And now you trot him out there for a 50-something yard field goal? Oof, that's tough. But he didn't look scared. He ain't look shooken. He ain't look shaken up. He ain't look terrified. Nope. He's back. So I love seeing that from Justin Tucker. Uh, Jordan Stout um, in this game, he had a really, really nice punt where they, uh, I think the Bengals, he got them in like, was it the five yard line? Maybe it was a 15. But then he had one that went into the end zone. But uh, so he was solid punting the ball today. Um, as far as return, man, because Deontay Hardy was out this game, Tylen Wallace. Uh, there was one punt where he just didn't field it, let it bounce, and the Bengals ended up down in it at like the two-yard line. That ended up leading to the safety. I forgot about that. Yeah, that safety. And that, that was a big difference in this game because you think about stuff like that, like how it's a game of inches. That safety, that's two points. What happens if the Ravens don't give up that safety? Well, so it's, I mean, I, it's just one of the things to think about. But um, that came from Tylen Wallace. He ain't want to field the ball. He let it bounce, and it took a Bengals bounce, and hey, it happens. So it was an unfortunate circumstance, an unfortunate set of events. Um, but, yeah, special teams, kick return. There was also a play where um, Collier, uh, Collier, I mean, he went to catch the ball on a kickoff, and we saw the ball hit him and go out of bounds. And he was like, oh, no, it ain't touch me, it ain't touch me. They showed the replay. Yeah, it definitely touched you, my friend. And I was thinking, like, oh, my goodness, what is going on with our special teams? We supposed to be like, come on, John Harbaugh, special teams coach. We supposed to have a, we used to be one of the best special teams in the league. What's going on? Like, Justin Tucker missing field goals all this season. Now with our kick return, we can't even get that. What's going on? But, yeah, so that was special teams. Defense. <laughs> my goodness. Zach Orr. Thank goodness the Baltimore Ravens won. Uh, I mean, even, if, even with them winning, I think it's very important that even with the team winning, you still address any issues, any problems, anything that went wrong, anything that you need to improve on. You still have to address it, especially when you win. Definitely when you lose, but especially when you win, too. Because you don't want, oh, yeah, we won the game. You don't want to just overlook it. If it was the Super Bowl or something, you, oh, cool. Hey, season's over. We're done. But it's not. This is week five. It's week five. So with this being week five, then you, you, you got to get better. There was one play toward the end of the game. One of Jamar Chase's two touchdowns um, where he just – Joe Burrow threw him like a two-yard pass, and Jamar Chase did the rest. That – there were two or three receivers over there. Uh, I know one of them might have been a tight end. So, anyway, there were three pass catches over there. And on that side of the field, it was Marlon Humphrey, Malik Harrison, and Roquan Smith. And I said, what? That, is that, that's malpractice right there. And that's, that's on, like, the players got to execute for sure, but that's on Zach All right there. Because that's not putting players in position to have success at all. At all. Pass coverage, Malik Harrison can't be out there. Trent Simpson showed a couple times this game, like, he needs to be out there in pass coverage. If there's a linebacker that's going to be out there in pass coverage, it needs to be him. We even saw one time he broke up a pass intended for T. Higgins. He was on T. Higgins. I said, whoa. But Roquan, it, I think it's been a lot of the same stuff. He's getting better, though. He's getting better. He's getting better. But defense overall, the pass rush, it was up and down this game. They did get three sacks, um, but it was, it was up and down. I think Kyle Hamilton got a sack. Uh, Justin Matabike got a sack. Who, who got the other one? Let me, let, me, let me see who got the other one for the Ravens. Because it was, oh, my fault, Namdi. Namdi Matabike, not Justin. My apologies. Uh, oh, Tavius Robinson, yeah. I forgot about that one. That's when he, boom, Joe Burrow. I said, whoa. So, yeah, they were getting but the pass rush kind of got quiet. They got a little quiet. Um, but, hey, like, adjustments got to be better by the defense overall. Nate Wiggins in this game, ooh, he got burned for a big one. But then he got just out. Joe Burrow just put in a, in, a, in a good place for T. Higgins to make a catch on Nate Wiggins. He was matched up with Jamar Chase a couple of times. But he, he, he did all right today. He did all right today. Nate Wiggins is going to be really good, man. Ooh, there was a really nice play where T. Higgins, he ran a little inside slant. As soon as he cut in, Nate Wiggins cut right with him. Joe Burrow threw the ball to T. Higgins. Nate Wiggins said, pop, knocked it right out. But no, he's he going to be nice, man. He's going to be really, really nice. And it's important that the Baltimore Ravens, 
you keep matching him up with these really good wide receivers. The, today was a great test for him, really the whole Ravens secondary, because oof, because Bengals receivers are so good. Bengals passing game is so good. It's so good. So I know there's been talk about Joe Burrow, and, and got to give a shout-out to Joe Burrow. Got to give a huge, huge, huge shout-out and respect to Joe Burrow. I know a lot gets mixed up with the, the, the Bengals being in Ravens division and whatnot. I know a lot of disrespect gets thrown out there, but I think it's very important to throw respect in there. Joe Burrow can play some ball, man. Let's not act like he can't. I know a lot of Ravens fans or just fans in general like to say, oh, what if Joe Burrow didn't have Jamal Chase? What if he didn't have T. Higgins? Well, can you blame him for the Bengals giving him weapons? You can't. You can't. You can't. So give a shout out to the Bengals for providing him with weapons so he can look even better. That's what we want the, the Ravens to do with Lamar. But anyway, the, the game, uh, Joe Burrow had an amazing game. There's been games recently too. I know against the Chiefs. Um, I think there was another one too, but where Joe Burrow, he's been playing good football, but the Bengals just, they just ain't been able to win. They ain't been able to win. See, he did have that one, that one interception, Marlon Humphrey. Shout out to Marlon Humphrey coming through. Shout out to us podcasters. See, people, hey, when you do bad, they will say, oh, he need to go back to podcasting. They say, he need to get off the podcast and go watch some film. What about when he does good? You going to tune in? Hey, shout out to podcasters, man. Um, but, yeah, it was a uh, bad game overall from the defense. They just kept giving it up, giving it up, giving it up. And wide open stuff, too. Eddie Jackson, oh, he's been struggling. Eddie Jackson been struggling big time. Kyle Hamilton, he had a pretty good game. Made some nice, nice plays. He was just he's all over like Kyle Hamilton has been. But he, oh my goodness, on that two point conversion, I got scared though. When Bengals went for that two point conversion, Kyle Hamilton picked it off. They did say pass interference though, but he was running, running, running. He picked it off and was running. Then he just he got tackled and then he sort of stayed down. I said, oh no. But then he got back up. He was just tired. I said, oh thank goodness, because I was so scared. I was so scared, so scared. Because um, he's the best player on Baltimore Ravens defense. Kyle Hamilton is, without a doubt. We've been saying that since last year. A lot of people question me. They, like, like, like last year, a lot of people like, Kyle Hamilton, the best player on the Ravens defense? Like, he's really good, but Roquan Smith better, is a better overall defensive player. Nope. Kyle Hamilton. And that, but now I think this year, people will definitely agree with that. Um, but, yeah, man, with uh, Ravens defense got to get better. Adjustments got to be better. Because, again, it's the same issues. You can't get 38 points. And I, get, I know it's Joe Burrow. I know it's Jamal Chase. I know it's T. 38 points. And, and, and just score after score after score after score after score. No matter how this game had went, obviously we're glad that it went on, on, on the right side of the Ravens. But no matter how this game went, we wouldn't be able to put it on the offense. Wouldn't be able to put any blame. or well, not much blame on the offense. It's, oh, defense takes it all. Defense takes it all. We in week five, though. I, I did say with Zach Orr. We talked about before the season started that we got to give Zach or at least six to seven weeks. We getting close. We getting real close. I say you can't judge him after the first couple of games. You can't judge him after the first four games. You cannot even judge him after the first five. You got to give him six to seven weeks. So we two weeks away. And let's see. Let's see what his tendencies are. Because we starting to see some tendencies. But let's see if some fixes end up being made. Let's see him versus rookie quarterback. Very soon. Let's just see what he does to try to make things better. Um, Brandon Stevens in this game mm, made a really, really good play on T. Higgins. T. Higgins almost mossed him. But Brandon Stevens, again, same thing every week with Brandon Stevens. He's very a very tricky cornerback because he doesn't get burned. But he'll be right there in, a, in position to make the play. But just getting his head turned around. That's, that's the part that he struggles with. Once he improves that, oof, it's game over. Like last, last year, what happened to Brandon Stevens from last year? Like last year, it was like, oh, yeah, Brandon Stevens, oh, if he keep playing like this, might price himself out. And we'll see. But um, he just got to work on getting his head turned around. And that's tough. Cornerback is a tough, 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 tough position. It's tough. You get caught peeking too early, then you'll give up something. So, yeah. Well, yeah, Ravens defense, they, they got a lot of work to do, a whole lot of work to do. But it's much better for them with having a whole lot of work to do after a win rather than a loss. Team, keep it clean. I love you all. appreciate you all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video, not a single upload, not a single thing. Leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a million times, man. It really does. It helps out so much. Again, turn notifications on. Subscribe and turn notifications on so you do not miss a thing. I appreciate you. I love you. And I'll see you soon. We out.